Hello and welcome into another episode of Lockdown Wolves. Today on the show, it's the first post-game podcast of the preseason this year. The Wolves took on the Dallas Mavericks in Abu Dhabi. We'll talk key takeaways, what surprised me about the rotations, and also the Wolves' offensive performance. Also, who impressed me the most individually. We'll talk individual studs and duds. It's all coming up on the show. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy weekend. And a big thank you, first of all, for making Locked On Wolves your first listen every single day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite Locked on, uh, or excuse me, all of your favorite audio platforms, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find Locked on Wolves. You can also watch on the Locked on Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV, along with all the other Minnesota podcasts. Now is a great time to do it. The, the uh, Minnesota Twins in the ALDS advancing past the first round wildcard series will take on the Houston Astros Saturday. Brandon Warren's got you covered over at Locked on Twins. And, of course, uh, wild preseason's over here soon. Regular season will kick off. Vikings, Golden Gophers, they're each, what, Gophers are five games in. Vikings are four games in. Um, so we're getting into the the midst of football season, too. It's a great, one of the best times. October is one of my favorite sports months. I think October and, like, March are probably my favorite uh, for all the reasons I just listed in October. Um, a fantastic time to download Lockdown Sports Minnesota, the app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And of course, you can also follow this show on Twitter or X at B Beacon and also at Locked on T Wolves. Don't forget the T. All right. Uh, Timberwolves started preseason on Thursday morning, central time, Thursday morning at 11 a.m. They played the Dallas Mavericks in Abu Dhabi. This is kind of my, it is a first post game podcast. I'll approach it just a little bit differently than what we'll do in the regular season. I want to talk, you know, I'm not going to talk really much game flow at all because it doesn't really matter. Basically, I want to focus more on individual performances. And, and one of the key things that I talked about this on Thursday show, maybe the thing you can glean the most from preseason is what, what is Chris Finch doing with the rotation? Um, now, Anthony Edwards did not play in this game. It sounds like he tweaked an ankle in practice in Abu Dhabi, but it's it's minor enough that they're even saying he'll they're hoping he plays Saturday. Um, so if it's minor enough, he's even going to play two days later in the preseason. Then it's super precautionary. Obviously, the Wolves are going to try and play these guys, uh, given the fact that it's international, you know, and the NBA is probably gently nudging these teams, maybe not so gently like, hey, play your superstars. This is a big deal for us uh, at the league level. So. Um, I mean, Cap played like normal minutes in the first half very briefly at the start of the third quarter. But like, I mean, what Cap played 17 minutes. Rudy played 23. Um, Nikhil Alexander Walker played 22. Shake Milton played 20. Nobody else more than 20 minutes, but a little bit more than I expected all those guys to play. So we'll see how much they play Saturday. It sounds like Ant may get an opportunity to play. So with the caveat that obviously having Ant in the middle of this thing is going to you know, skew, not skew, but like reallocate these minutes a little bit in, in a couple different directions. It mostly played out how I expected from a rotation perspective, the game flow itself. The wolves got up huge early in this game it was 22 to five. At one point they led by 18 at the end of the first quarter, uh, 17 at halftime. Dallas had a big early third quarter run that made things really kind of hang around that like eight to 12 point range for a really long time. And ultimately the wolves won by 12. Basically it hung in that range the rest of the game for the most part. And, um, you know, there were a couple of moments where it looked like Dallas was going to make a serious run. But in general, the Wolves did a good job hanging on to that lead, even with shuffling guys in and out of the lineup, especially in the second half. So um, they put this thing away early. And and really, what it was early in the game, and this would be kind of my other, one of my other key takeaways beyond the rotation, was the Turbos had outstanding ball movement, especially early in this game. Um, 
transition half court, you name it. That's what led to them building the 22 to five lead and then sustaining it through the rest of the first half. Um, the, I thought cutters, active cutters was really impressive. Jade McDaniels, um, Carl the towns a couple of times, just the kind of the structure that Chris Finch has talked about implementing, uh, you know, it didn't feel like ultra structure and again, first preseason game. So who knows how much they've actually installed in terms of Finch's offense or what he'd like to run this year. But it really felt like the, the, the exact kind of like, well, I mean, Finch talks about putting bumpers on the offense. That's what this felt like is that like, they were basically doing pick and roll, mostly playing, you know, four out as much as possible. And then filling gaps with cutters kind of, um, in the wake of one another. And when somebody drives from one side, somebody cutting uh, from the other side and backfilling guys on the perimeter, like the spacing was much better than I remember it being for so much of last year. And and of course that's even with Rudy on the floor. Now having Carl Anthony Towns on the floor is going to help that cat hit a three immediately when this game started very first possession, second possession, he squeezed the trigger as a trailer in transition. And then he hit another three later. He missed that one, but he hit another three, not that long after that. And not that he needed to hit a couple of threes for, for the Mavericks to respect him, but it does something, I think, in the minds of these defenders when Towns hits a three early and you're jumping out on him, that he can get his head and shoulders past you and drive and then kick or score himself. Or it just simply starts this kind of collapse of the defense, right? Because then Cat can just get a couple steps and then the defense is collapsing to protect and then he can kick to an open shooter. That that person gets a drive uh, you know, on a, on a sloppy closeout, and whatever it might be. That's all it takes is the threat of that first shot. And we saw them playing up on cat so often than the rest of the game. And, and we saw this throughout, you know, more two years ago than last year where, you know, the old, what was it, you know, setting up using, you know, playing inside out the way cat needs to play is outside in. If he knocks down a couple of threes early in the game, teams are going to overplay him on the perimeter. And that sets up the drive, drawing fouls, et cetera, um, and creating for teammates. And we saw last year, and the year before, he's just improved it as, as a decision maker with the ball in his hands. The crazy passes are fewer and farther between, and he was a genuinely efficient passer last year. We've talked about this a couple of times in the offseason, but if you look at all the numbers at B-Ball Index, it's you know high quality assists, high value assists, uh, low turnover compared to how often, you know, what his usage and assist rates are. Really impressive how Cat has improved in those areas of, of his game. And that was one of my key takeaways in this game. Um, Shake Milton, uh, we'll talk about him a little bit later. Carl Tony Towns being aggressive early and finishing with 20 points in just 17 minutes. He had like, I think 16 or something at halftime. Um, all key takeaways from this game. I do want to spend most of the rest of the time today talking about the rotation and breaking down what Chris Finch did, um, early in this game for rotation perspective, especially, and then we'll focus a little on the bench guys. We'll do some quick studs and duds, really more studs in this game. Um, but I mean, there were what? Uh, nine, 10, there were 15 guys that saw the floor in this game for the wolves. So, and by the way, all 15 of them played at least 10 minutes, which is crazy. So I want to, I want to talk about a few of those guys next. We'll talk rotation and my key takeaways there. And, uh, that's what we'll do here. The rest of the show today. Today's episode of lockdown wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book, America's number one sports book, and also the official sports book of the NFL. Um, FanDuel is the place to go right now. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you have to do is place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options that includes spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown. You can kick off the NFL season that way. Uh, the Vikings play their fifth game this weekend. Thursday Night Football this week was a surprising blowout. Uh, the Chicago Bears beating Washington and Washington, the Bears getting their first win. And uh, that's my favorite time to to bet on FanDuel. It would be Thursday night and also Monday Night Football when there's just a game, sometimes two on the slate. There's also another London game early Sunday morning. It's a great time to get in on the NFL action. Also, you can go to NBA win totals. We talked about that I haven't given my official, official Timberwolves win total projection, but let's just say I'm taking the over on FanDuel's win total for the Timberwolves. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just place a $5 bet. Again, $200 in bonus bets, win 
or lose. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's talk rotations. Uh, Chris Finch, again, no Anthony Edwards, so this thing isn't going to be 100% accurate, but I think for the most part, first guys in and out is going to be pretty close to accurate. Uh, for the Wolves, at about the five-minute mark in the first quarter, so seven minutes into the game, Rudy Gobert and Mike Conley, the two you know elder statesmen of the starting lineup, hit the bench. Kyle Anderson and Shake Milton came into the game. So that gave the Wolves a lineup of Shake Milton, and oh, by the way, I should say, Nikhil Alexander-Walker started in place of Anthony Edwards. So your backcourt at this moment was Shake Milton, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Then you have McDaniels, Kyle Anderson, and Carl Anthony Towns slides from the four to the five with Rudy leaving. About a minute later, Nas comes in for Carl Anthony Towns. So now Nas is playing the five. Both Cat and Rudy are on the bench. So um, I don't know, a pretty medium-sized lineup. I wouldn't call it a small ball lineup with McDaniels at the three and Anderson at the four, right? And then... Um, Shortly thereafter, you get Troy Brown Jr. making his unofficial Timberwolves debut, preseason Timberwolves debut, coming in for McDaniels. So now your lineup is Shake, Alexander Walker, Troy Brown Jr. at the three, Kyle Anderson, and Nas Reed. So a, sm a little bit of a smaller lineup at that point. Still, I mean, Shake Milton's pretty big for a point guard. Alexander Walker is pretty big for a two guard. But, you know, you're ranging from 6'4 to like 6'9 ish, right? Like that's kind of your, your five guys. And then two minutes after that, so now we're talking at the, um, basically the two minutes left in the first quarter mark. You have Rudy coming back into the game in place of Alexander Walker. So Alexander Walker is the last one to leave the floor from the starting lineup. Rudy's back. So you've got Shake Milton, Troy Brown Jr., Kyle Anderson at the three. He slides from the four to the three. Nas slides from the five to the four. And Rudy's at the five. So they played the last two minutes of the first quarter with Nas at the four and Kyle Anderson at the three. And that's kind of what I was expecting to see a lot of. And we saw that if we're taking just the first quarter for about the same amount of time as, as we saw no Rudy, no cat on the floor with Nas at the five. And I think depending on the matchups, the wolves can get away with that a little bit. Um, when Rudy came back in, the wolves are up by 17. They played the last two minutes of the first quarter. They ended the quarter up 18. Uh, so negligible there. It wasn't a huge swing one way or the other. Um, but that's going to be something to track is first of all, how often do the wolves do that with no Rudy or cat Nas at the five Kyle Anderson at his more natural position, probably more effective position at the four uh, versus, you know, what they, what they started with, which was, you know, um, having Anderson at the three Nas at the, uh, or I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anderson at the three Nas at the four and Rudy at the five uh, second quarter, Mike Conley, this is really interesting. Mike Conley and Jordan McLaughlin came in together. Now this is where I think, my guess is you're looking at the 10 guys that played in the first half. Normally there's no McLaughlin. And instead you're going to have Anthony Edwards in the mix. That that's my guess is that McLaughlin was basically getting the Anthony Edwards minutes here uh, because McLaughlin and Conley checked in together. Conley effectively then playing the two McLaughlin, the one with Troy Brown, Nas Reed and Rudy Gobert. So on the one hand, you've got Nas playing the four, which is a pretty big lineup, but then you have Conley and McLaughlin in the backcourt together, which is a pretty small lineup. So if you assume that Ant would have subbed out earlier in the first quarter, um, then he probably comes back here, or maybe you bring Conley back and Shake doesn't leave the floor at all, and it's Conley and Milton together in the backcourt. That's actually more likely. Ant probably stays on the floor until Alexander Walker left, so Ant probably plays the first 10. He leaves. Then Conley probably comes back, and Shake Milton stays on the floor uh, to start the second quarter if, if Ant is healthy. That's my guess. But anyway... We got a bunch of time with McLaughlin and Conley together in the backcourt. It actually went okay. I thought McLaughlin played pretty well in this game overall. And then Carl Anthony Towns is the next sub. At eight minutes, he comes in for Rudy Gobert. So now you've got McLaughlin, Conley, Troy Brown at the three, Nas, and Cat at the five. And then you get kind of a wholesale, you know, you get a, a three-man hockey change, if you hockey line change, if you will. Kyle Anderson comes back, Shake Milton comes back, and Jade McDaniels come back. Conley goes back to the bench. Nas hits the bench for the first time in a while. And then so does Troy Brown Jr. Cat is back at center at this point. So in the first quarter plus four minutes, so first, what, 16 minutes of this game, you've had Nas play some minutes at the five. You've had Cat play minutes at the five. You've had Rudy play minutes at the five. That's what this team's going to be like this year. And as long as everybody can find and keep something, some semblance of a rhythm, some semblance of a rhythm, I should say. I felt like I said that weird. 
then this depth is going to be a boon for Minnesota. And there's just like waves of, of bigs coming at people, um, coming at the opponent. If, if you're able to, to do this, um, like it's a ton of length, right? It just, it's a, a ton of length. Um, and it worked well in this game, obviously. I mean, the Wolves were the aggressor and, and they looked more interested in playing than Dallas and, um, and cat was awesome early. I haven't really focused on that much, but he was really good in all facets early in this game. But I thought the rotation was really intriguing and, and I think it was well done. And, and obviously we're talking the very beginning of the very first preseason game with no Anthony Edwards, but, if Chris Finch follows a similar pattern, you know, moving forward, I, I thought it was really smart. I thought it made sense. Uh, second half, you know, you get into um, a lot of the other guys playing, like the starters started the first part of the third quarter and then hit the bench basically for the rest of the game. And like I said, you saw 15 guys play. All of them played at least 10 minutes. We didn't see um, like Leonard Miller towards the very end of the game, Matt Ryan played in the fourth quarter, only Josh mine at Luca Garza. I was a little surprised mine. It didn't get onto the floor any earlier. Um, so I, like nobody really, well, I guess we'll get into that here in a minute. We get to studs and duds, but, um, it was good to see all those guys get in. I mean, the, none of the exhibit 10 guys played, you know, beat crazy Dacia Dix, uh, Tyrese Martin, Trevor Keels, those guys, none of those guys saw the floor. Um, but everybody else did everybody else that's on a standard contract. So it was basically standard contract guys plus Luca Garza and Matt Ryan all saw the floor in this game. Um, so it was about, about what you'd expect there. So again, key takeaways overall, certainly, um, ball movement on offense, active cutters, seemingly a little bit more structure to the offense, good decisions, passing the ball, guys spotting up for clean looks at threes and knocking them down. I mean, for the game, the Wolves, uh, they ended up only shooting 31% from three, but they were hot early and they got good looks. In fact, we could break it down this way. The starting lineup for the Wolves was what? Uh, seven of seven of 17 from three. Like you'll take that all day. The bench is, is what really struggled. The starting lineup was seven of 17 from three. Um, so that, that tracks with what I saw early in this game that they were just getting clean looks and they were knocking them down. Really impressive. Um, so. All that was good. Uh, we talked a little bit about Cat's aggressiveness off the dribble, also shooting threes, was squeezing the trigger. I wouldn't say too much. I mean, he shot the ball 16 times in 17 minutes, was only two of seven on threes, but most of them were good looks. I thought he made good decisions with the ball in his hands. Didn't commit any fouls in 17 minutes. I know preseason, but that was good to see still. Um, so that was all positive. And also Shake Milton's aggressiveness. We'll talk more about Shake and studs and duds. Uh, he played a really, really good game as well. So, um, positive takeaways across the board and the wolves getting a 12 point win in the preseason exhibition opener with no Anthony Edwards is huge. I want to close with studs and duds. I want to dig in a bit. There's three wolves. I'll single out of studs as we always do. And then a couple of guys off the bench, uh, that we saw limited stuff from, but players I want to keep an eye out for throughout the preseason, uh, slate. So we'll get to all that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs, simply put, make you look good. They're the best shorts. They're the best pants you can find out there. They are stretch khaki shorts, have a liner in them, sweat wicking fabric uh, that helps you stay dry and smelling great. But they also make you look great. They give your legs uh, a truly sculpted look because they fit slimmer through the thigh. They're the only thing that I wear. I barely wear basketball shorts anymore, which has kind of always been my go-to around the house, even sometimes when I go to the store or it's like khakis, if you're going out to like a, I don't know, like dinner or something. Um, and you know, basketball shorts when you get home, I will literally wear just, just wear bird dogs morning tonight. I will wear them everywhere. I will wear them out to the store. I will wear them to dinner. I will wear them to church. I will wear them, um, hanging out, you know, uh, grilling in the backyard. I'll wear them on the couch. Like it, it's not like, hey, I'm home. I got to change out of my khaki shorts. No, you, you're you wearing your bird dogs. You're wearing them all the time. They are extremely comfortable and they look great. Again, cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khaki, but it stretches. So you get a slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Uh, they also, as I said, anti-sweat wicking fabric, anti-stink sweat wicking fabric keeps you cool and dry all day long. They're absolutely functional for any occasion at all. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. You can enter the promo code 
locked in NBA at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. It's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free water bottle at checkout. You don't want to take off your bird dogs. We can promise you that. All right. Uh, let's close the show by talking individual studs and duds here today and can't talk studs without leading with shake Milton. He was fantastic in this game. Probably the best all around player on the floor for the wolves. He had 12 points. So tied for third on the team in scoring five of six shooting two of three outside the arc, four rebounds, one assist, one steal, a couple of turnovers. He did commit four fouls in 20 minutes, but I thought he was fantastic. And Chris Finch actually said after the game that the coaching staff has talked a lot about how pleasantly surprised they've been. Obviously they signed him for a reason, but to get to, you know, uh, get to see him up close and personal, so to speak, see him in practice, et cetera. They've been really impressed with him. And he, uh, he played backup point guard in this game. He played a little bit of two guard and looked exactly what I remember seeing with him, with the Sixers. Like there was that one game. I mentioned this the other day, he scored 20 plus against the wolves, a shorthanded Sixers team. And he, when he just gets a one-on-one, -on -one, he can blow past almost anybody. And because he's shake Milton and not Anthony Edwards or whoever, you know, opposing defenses aren't loading up on him necessarily. He can beat you to the cup one-on-one. -on -one. He's got enough size, 6'4", good build, uh, decent length, um, and enough athleticism to finish at the rim more often than not. So if if you turn your head, you're expecting a screen coming. If, if you don't have any help behind you, he can roast you and beat you to the basket. Uh, we saw that a couple of times in this game. Hit a couple of nice threes. Um, I think one was off the dribble. One was catch and shoot. If I, if I'm not mistaken, just a well-rounded offensive game. And the way I described it the other day, when I previewed the season for shake Milton, I think it might've been Monday or Tuesday this week. He's essentially playing the hybrid role of Jalen Noel and Jordan McLaughlin, where he's going to be the backup point guard, which is what Jalen Noel ended up being because of McLaughlin's injury and then his struggles. But he's going to be asked to score, which obviously McLaughlin never has been. Uh, but Noel was, and he wasn't efficient doing it last season, but shake Milton's going to get, be given the opportunity to do it. And the way he scores is much more getting to the basket and also some catch and shoot opportunities. Noel was more pick and roll, um, you know, shoot out a pick and roll, get to the mid range, occasionally get to the basket, but it was more mid range off the dribble three shakes more catch and shoot and get all the way to the basket. And I think that fits what the wolves need and want him to do a little bit more. I think he's a better fit for what Chris Finch wants to do than what Jalen Noel was. And he's just a bigger, more dynamic player than Jordan McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin's still the better defender between the two. Um, Shake is going to be the worst defender in the Wolves backcourt, at least in the rotation. I mean, like everybody else is really good. So it's, it's not surprising, but like, I mean, obviously Mike Conley's still a good defender on ball. Fantastic as a team defender. Nick Alexander Walker, a very good on ball defender or well-rounded all around defender. Um, Anthony Edwards, outstanding on-ball defender, growing as an off-ball defender, we'll say that. Jordan McLaughlin, when, if he plays, a solid defender, albeit undersized, but a solid defender. Shake Milton is going to be the weak link if there is one, uh, but just his size, and if he plays hard, that will help disrupt things for opposing offenses. And I, I again, I thought all around he was very good in this game. Really intrigued to see him continue to play in a Wolves uniform. And, and I thought he made, he only had one assist, to two turnovers, but that'll be something to keep an eye on too. Like, is he, is he going to uh, make the right passes pass enough or will he get that Jalen Noel tunnel syndrome where like, Hey, I got to be Jamal Crawford and get buckets off the bench. Um, or will he be able to kind of do both, right? Like call his own number when necessary, but also distribute and pass the teammates. So we'll see how that shakes out. Another stud for the Wolves, Carl Anthony Towns, it ended up being a relatively efficient, not as, not as impressive as how he started, but still 20 points in 17 minutes on 16 shots is nothing to sneeze at. He added four rebounds, one assist, a couple of blocks. I mentioned this earlier, no personal fouls in 17 minutes. Good to see for cap. But again, the aggression early, especially going to the basket, squeezing the trigger when given any sort of daylight from the perimeter was also really nice to see. Uh, so a strong performance from cat. I'll give the third stud to Nikhil Alexander Walker getting the start in place of Anthony Edwards. He was second on the team in minutes with 22, 11 points, five rebounds and five assists in this game, two blocks only committed one foul in 22 minutes, ran a bit of the offense at times um, in this game for Minnesota and looked pretty good doing it. Clearly Chris Finch has considered, I mean, they did this last year, right? When Noel was 
struggling, and then he got hurt towards the end of the year. McLaughlin was really struggling. Mikel Alexander-Walker ran some point for this team uh, for the second unit, and he was serviceable. Um, you know, he's not dynamic off the dribble for himself, but he's a good enough passer, has good size, can see the floor, and is a, a good enough three-point shooter to keep teams honest. So there's something there if he needs to initiate. All five of his field goal attempts in this game were threes, and they looked smooth. I thought, and I didn't, you know, I haven't looked at this side-by-side -side versus last year, felt like his shot looked a lot smoother than what I remember it being last year. And he shot the three really well for Team, U or excuse me, Team Canada in the FIBA World Cup uh, throughout the month of August and into September. So perhaps there's something there. Perhaps the three-point shot has improved, which would make him a really dangerous, bona fide three and D type guy, which is kind of the goal all along. I was dubious when the Wolves chose to resign him that that was really the case, that he was going to be a full-on like top-flight three and D type player. Uh, we'll see what that turns into. No duds in this one. Nobody really played enough minutes to for me to just hand out a dud in the first preseason game. I mean, I'll give some grace for knocking the rust off. Matt Ryan only played 10 minutes in the fourth quarter, squeezed the trigger three times, uh, which is, I mean, what he's got to do, right? That's his one NBA skill is just shoot threes. Well, he missed all three of them. Had one assist, one rebound, no other stats in 10 minutes. He did commit a foul too. Josh Minot, very quiet. Did have three boards and three assists, but 0-3 shooting in just 11 minutes. Um, continues to kind of do stuff. He also had a block too. So I, I say quiet. He just didn't score, but he did the other stuff, right? And that's what you need Josh Minot to do. Um, Luca Garza typically active on the glass, six boards in just 11 minutes. He also somehow shot the ball 13 times. He had three offensive rebounds in his 11 minutes as well. Uh, Nas was good. Um, I don't know. It was a, kind of a typical Nas game. He only played 18 minutes, but he put up 16 and seven. Like you knew Nas Reed was in the game. Looked extremely nimble and quick. Somehow even maybe a little bit slimmer. Not in a bad way. Uh, a little more sleek, if you will. Um, but especially early. Got to the line five times in 18 minutes. I could have given him a stud, actually. He was pretty good. Um, especially early in this game. It just felt like he was shooting the ball a ton. Um, he did finish second on the team in field goal attempts next to Cat. Which, by the way, how crazy is this? There were three Timberwolves players who shot the ball more than six times. Excuse me, more than eight times in this game. Only three. They all shot the ball more than 13 times, and they were all centers. None of them were Rudy Gobert. Not that he ever shoots the ball that much, but it was Carl Thay Towns shot 16 times. Nas Reed shot the ball 14 times, and Garza shot the ball 13 times in 11 minutes. Part of that was offensive rebounds. I mean, they combined for six, uh, but that wasn't it. I mean, like they all, they combined to shoot the ball 11 times from outside the arc too. So um, a lot of big shooting the ball. It was interesting. Um, I shouldn't be super surprised by that. It was just kind of a weird kind of quirk, I guess. Troy Brown, uh, a good Timberwolves debut. He was more active defensively and on the glass than I was necessarily expecting in a preseason game. He had seven boards in 18 minutes. It actually was tied for second on the team in rebounds. He had six points, knocked down a couple of threes in this game. Um, I talked about McLaughlin. We talked about Shake Milton. Wendell Moore looked pretty good. Got into the game into the third in the third quarter. And uh, so technically he was, what, the 11th guy for the Wolves in this game. Um, and I, I have kind of talked about, is it more, is it McLaughlin that would get those 11th man minutes if somebody's down and it looks like they both got a shot, right? Um, I mean, they did both get a shot. Basically they both played 12 minutes. So something to keep an eye on if they like the development from Wendell Moore, and if they think he can help initiate some offense, he's a better option defensively just because he's a little bigger and a little more athletic than Jordan McLaughlin. Um, it theoretically more offensive upside too. So that's something to keep an eye on too. If Wendell Moore can kind of seize that, whatever the 11th man role really is, if it's a role, I don't know, but I like to think of it that way, right? Like who's the next guy up if Ant or Conley or whoever can't go for a game or gets into big foul trouble, like who's that next guy? Clearly that's something that Finch is going to weigh here early in the preseason. Is it McLaughlin? Is it more? Is it more? And of course that changes over the course of the regular season. Anyway, we see that all the time. Uh, the rotation last October was not what it was even in December last year. So um, at, at any rate, important to, to continue to watch. All right. In general, impressive first preseason game, good offensive performance, solid defensively, decent on the glass. We didn't really talk about that, but um, the Wolves were a plus 14 on the glass, which was good to see. Um, and they'll be back at it again Saturday. Another 11 a.m. tip on NBA TV Central Time. We'll talk about Saturday's game on Monday's show. We'll do a bit of a, a, a condensed post game pod on Monday, and then we'll get back into player previews. We have four players to go uh, if if 
if I'm not mistaken, I believe we just got to do McDaniels, Rudy, Anthony Edwards, and Carl Anthony Towns. We'll probably do full-ish shows or at least two segments on each of them to preview their season as we did with Mike Conley on Thursday's show. So that's what we'll do all of next week. Of course, preseason continues. Um, so we'll be covering that too. A big thank you to those of you that do make Lockdown Wolves your first listen every single day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. You can follow on X at B Beacon and also at Locked on T Wolves. Don't forget the T. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.